Have you ever been in a natural area in Florida and seen some animal tracks? Maybe you wondered what kind of animal it was, or if it lived there all year, or was just passing through. For example, here in the Florida scrub, we have a lot of bear activity in the fall when there's saw palmetto berries and acorns and hickory nuts to eat, but not a lot of bear activity the other times of the year. So, how much room to roam do animals like bears and panthers need? And how can we use science to figure it out? Plus, where does Archbold fit into all of this? Well, let's start with the Corridor Observatory. The Corridor Observatory is a network of wildlife cameras and audio recorders that we're using to monitor wildlife communities within the Florida Wildlife Corridor. The Florida Wildlife Corridor is a network of more or less ecologically connected nature reserves like state parks, national parks, national wildlife management areas, wildlife, uh, state wildlife management areas, etc., as well as working private lands that support the corridor. So we're using this network of devices to monitor how animals are moving across these boundaries and, and using this kind of whole geography that we've now um, come to know. Every month, our crew from Archbold and our collaborators at the University of Florida go to the field to service the devices and make sure they keep working. So that means changing out the batteries, swapping out the SD cards that contain all of our data, that means doing some site maintenance with weed trimmers um, just to make sure that the weeds and uh, grass don't grow up and interfere with the collection of data. And crucially, making sure that the seals and everything are free of fouling like dust and sand and, and particles of grass and things like that. So there's quite a lot of work. It's, it's fairly labor intensive to keep these sensitive electronic devices running in the field, which is pretty hostile here in Florida. The Corridor Observatory launched in 2022. It's a new and growing project, but has already recorded bear, panther, deer, hogs, birds, and more at Archbold and nearby properties. The observatory also offers a glimpse into animal behavior and interactions, like raccoons fighting a bobcat. <laughs> The Corridor Observatory and other research show that the Florida Wildlife Corridor is vital for wildlife in our state. But if we don't have a map and a plan, their future is in doubt. The science and art of map making is also known as cartography. And we use cartography for a lot of different things here at Archbold. This is an example of a project that we did in 2009 and 2010, where we followed the journey of a Florida black bear. He had a GPS collar around his neck and we could download that data and see where he traversed the landscape. This bear started down in the Archbold area and headed up towards Orlando and back down in a short period of time. Uh, and this bear also became the inspiration for the Florida Wildlife Corridor because while he traversed some lands that were conserved, there are plenty of other areas on his pathway that are not yet protected and could be lost to development if we don't act soon. Here we have a map of the Florida Wildlife Corridor, and this is based on the University of Florida's Ecological Greenways Network. Um, and everything that is in green here is the Florida Wildlife Corridor. The darker green areas are areas that are already conserved, and the lighter green areas are what we call opportunity areas, which are areas that are yet to be conserved. Here's another example of how we use maps. This is a map of land cover in the Florida Wildlife Corridor. You can see in the southern part of the state there's a lot of agriculture here and it's specifically ranch lands and in the northern part of the state there's a lot more forested areas. Both of these habitats are really supportive of wildlife movement which is why they are in the Florida Wildlife Corridor. Florida's population is growing by over 1100 people per day for the last 18 months. That's equivalent to adding almost a Miami's worth of people every single year. That's a pretty frightening pace 
So we have to find a place to put all those people. The Florida Wildlife Corridor provides a plan or a blueprint for how to do that. The areas that might be better for development and the areas where we should be avoiding it to protect areas for wildlife and for nature. At Archbold, we do the science that helps inform how to turn that Florida Wildlife Corridor uh, vision into conservation on the ground. That includes, for instance, prioritizing the areas that are most important to conserve first, either because they're the most important for biodiversity or because they're at the highest risk of development or some combination of the two. Even though Florida's population is growing really fast, we're actually in a pretty fortunate position conservation-wise. Florida leads the way in states east of the Mississippi in land conservation, and we have over 30% of the state already conserved. That's thanks to the decades-long effort of lots of corridor conservation partners who were doing corridor conservation long before we called it that. There's still a lot to learn, but Archbold Biological Station and our partners will continue to build the scientific knowledge needed to protect the life, lands, and waters in the Florida Wildlife Corridor and beyond. Thanks for watching.